The Swift Programming Language Book by Apple, copyright 2022, made available under the Creative Commons Attribution International License. The Tour Playground is also published by Apple under a permissive license. A Swift Tour. Tradition suggests that the first program in a new language should print the words Hello World on the screen. In Swift, this can be done in a single line. If you have written code in C or Objective-C, this syntax looks familiar to you. In Swift, this line of code is a complete program. You don't need to import a separate library for functionality like input-output or string handling. Code written at global scope is used as the entry point for the program, so you do not need a main function. You also do not need to write semicolons at the end of every statement. This tour gives you enough information to start writing code in Swift by showing you how to accomplish a variety of programming tasks. Do not worry if you don't understand something. Everything introduced in this tour is explained in detail in the rest of this book. Note, on a Mac with Xcode installed, or on an iPad with Swift Playgrounds, you can open this chapter as a playground. Playgrounds allow you to edit the code listings and see the result immediately. Simple values. Use let to make a constant and var to make a variable. The value of a constant does not need to be known at compile time, but you must assign it a value exactly once. This means you can use constants to name a value that you determine once, but use in many places. A constant or variable must have the same type as the value you want to assign to it. However, you do not always have to write the type explicitly. Providing a value when you create a constant or variable lets the compiler infer its type. In the example above, the compiler infers that my variable is an integer because its initial value is an integer. If the initial value does not provide enough information, or if it isn't an initial value, specify the type by writing it after the variable, separated by a colon. Experiment. Create a constant with an explicit type of float and a value of 4. Values are never implicitly converted to another type. If you need to convert a value to a different type, explicitly make an instance of the desired type. Experiment. Try removing the conversion to string from the last line. What error do you get? There is an even simpler way to include values in strings. Write the value in parentheses and write a backslash before the parentheses. For example, experiment. Use the backslash in parentheses to include a floating point calculation in a string and to include someone's name in a greeting. Use three double quotation marks for strings that take up multiple lines. Indentation at the start of each quoted line is removed as long as it matches the indentation of the closing quotation marks. For example, create arrays and dictionaries using brackets and access their elements by writing the index or key in brackets. A comma is allowed after the last element. Arrays automatically grow as you add elements. To create an empty array or dictionary, use the initializer syntax. If type information can be inferred, you can write an empty array with brackets and an empty dictionary with the brackets with the colon in between. For example, when you set a new value for a variable or pass an argument to a function. Control flow. Use if and switch to make conditionals. And use for in, while, and repeat while to make loops. Parentheses around the condition or loop variable are optional. Braces around the body are required. In an if statement, the conditional must be a Boolean expression. This means that code such as if score is an error, not an implicit comparison to zero. You can use if and let together to work with values that might be missing. These values are represented as optionals. An optional value either contains a value or contains nil to indicate that a value is missing. Write a question mark after the type of a value to mark the value as optional. Experiment. Change optional name to nil. What greeting do you get? Add an else clause that sets different greeting if optional name is nil. If the optional value is nil, the conditional is false, and the code in braces is skipped. 
Otherwise, the optional value is unramped and assigns the constant after let, which makes the unramped value available inside the block of code. Another way to handle optional values is to provide a default value using the nil coalescing operator. If the optional value is missing, the default value is used instead. Switches support any kind of data and a wide variety of comparison operations. They are not limited to integers and tests for equality. Experiment. Try removing the default case. What error do you get? Notice how let can be used in a pattern to assign the value that matched the pattern to a constant. After executing the code inside the switch case that matched, the program exits from the switch statement. Execution does not continue to the next case, so you do not need to explicitly break out of the switch at the end of each case's code. You use for in to iterate over items in a dictionary by providing a pair of names to use for each key value pair. Dictionaries are an unordered collection, so their keys and values are iterated over in an arbitrary order. Experiment. Replace the underscore with the variable name and keep track of which kind of number was the largest. Use while to repeat a block of code until a condition changes. The condition of a loop can be at the end instead, ensuring that the loop is run at least once. You can keep an index in a loop by using dot dot and then the less than symbol to make a range of indices. Use dot dot less than to make a range that omits its upper value and use dot 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 to make a range that includes both values. Functions and closures. Use func to declare a function. Call a function by following its name with a list of arguments in parentheses. Use the arrow to separate the parameter names and types from the function's return type. Experiment. Remove the day parameter. Add a parameter to include today's lunch special in the greeting. By default, functions use their parameter names as labels for their arguments. Write a custom argument label before the parameter name or write underscore to use no argument label. Use a tuple to make a compound value. For example, to return multiple values from a function. The elements of a tuple can be referred to either by name or by number. Functions can be nested. Nested functions have access to variables that were declared in the outer function. You can use nested functions to organize the code in a function that is long or complex. Functions are a first class type. This means that a function can return another function as its value. A function can take another function as one of its arguments. Functions are actually a special case of closures, blocks of code that can be called later. The code in a closure has access to things like variables and functions that were available in the scope where the closure was created even if the closure is in a different scope when it's executed. You saw an example of this already with nested functions. You can write a closure without any name by surrounding the code with braces. Use in to separate the arguments and the return type from the body. Experiment. Rewrite the closure to return zero for all odd numbers. You have several options for writing closures more concisely. When a closure's type is already known, such as the callback for a delegate, you can omit the type of its parameters, its return type, or both. Single statement closures implicitly return the value of their only statement. You can refer to parameters by number instead of by name. This approach is especially useful in very short closures. A closure passed as the last argument to a function can appear immediately after the parentheses. When a closure is the only argument to a function, you can omit the parentheses entirely. Objects and classes. Use class followed by the class's name to create a class. A property declaration in a class is written the same way as a constant or variable declaration, except that it is in the context of a class. 
Likewise, method and function declarations are written the same way. Experiment. Add a constant property with let and add another method that takes an argument. Create an instance of a class by putting parentheses after the class name. Use dot syntax to access the properties and methods of the instance. This version of the shape class is missing something important, an initializer to set up the class when an instance is created. Use init to create one. Notice how self is used to distinguish the name property from the name argument to the initializer. The arguments to the initializer are passed like a function call when you create an instance of the class. Every property needs a value assigned, either in its declaration, such as with number of sides, or in the initializer, as with name. Use dinit to create a deinitializer if you need to perform some cleanup before the object is deallocated. Subclasses include their superclass name after their class name, separated by a colon. There is no requirement for classes to subclass any standard root class, so you can include or omit a superclass as needed. Methods on a subclass that override the superclass's implementation are marked with override. Overriding a method by accident without override is detected by the compiler as an error. The compiler also detects method with override that do not actually override any method in the superclass. Experiment. Make another subclass of named shape called circle that takes a radius and a name as arguments to its initializer. Implement an area and a simple description method on the circle class. In addition to simple properties that are stored, properties can have a getter and a setter. In the setter for perimeter, the new value has the implicit name new value. You can provide an explicit name in parentheses after set. Notice that the initializer for the equilateral triangle class has three different steps. One, setting the value of properties that the subclass declares. Two, calling the superclass's initializer. Three, changing the value of properties defined by the superclass. Any additional setup work that uses methods, getters, or setters can also be done at this point. If you do not need to compute the property, but still need to provide code that is run before and after setting a new value, use will set and did set. The code you provide is run anytime the value changes outside of an initializer. For example, the class below ensures that the side length of the triangle is always the same as the side length of its square. When working with optional values, you can write question mark before operations like methods, properties, and subscripting. If the value before the question mark is nil, everything after the question mark is ignored and the value of the whole expression is nil. Otherwise, the optional value is unwrapped and everything after the question mark acts on the unwrapped value. In both cases, the value of the whole expression is an optional value. Enumerations and structures. Use enum to create an enumeration. Like classes and all other name types, enumerations can have methods associated with them. Experiment. Write a function that compares two rank values by comparing their raw values. By default, Swift assigns the raw values starting at zero and incrementing by one each time, but you can change this behavior by explicitly specifying values. In the example above, ace is explicitly given a raw value of one, and the rest of the raw values are assigned in order. You can also use strings or floating point numbers as the raw type of an enumeration. Use the raw value property to access the raw value of an enumeration case. Use the init question mark raw value initializer to make an instance of an enumeration from a raw value. It returns either the enumeration case matching the raw value or nil if there is no matching rank. The case values of an enumeration are actual values, not just another way of writing their raw values. In fact, in cases where there is not a meaningful raw value, you do not have to provide one. Experiment. Add a color method to suit that returns black for spades and clubs and returns red for hearts and diamonds. Notice the two ways that the hearts case of the enumeration is referred to above. 
when assigning a value to the hearts constant, the enumeration case suit.hearts is referred to by its full name because the constant does not have an explicit type specified. Inside the switch, the enumeration case is referred to by the abbreviated form dot hearts because the value of self is already known to be a suit. You can use the abbreviated form anytime the values type is already known. If an enumeration has raw values, those values are determined as part of the declaration, which means every instance of a particular enumeration case always has the same raw value. Another choice for enumeration cases is to have values associated with the case. These values are determined when you make the instance, and they can be different for each instance of a, an enumeration case. You can think of the associated values as behaving like stored properties of the enumeration case instance. For example, consider the case of requesting the sunrise and sunset times from a server. The server either responds with the requested information or it responds with a description of what went wrong. Experiment. Add a third case to the server response and to the switch. Notice how the sunrise and sunset times are extracted from the server response value as part of matching the value against the switch cases. Use struct to create a structure. Structures support many of the same behaviors as classes, including methods and initializers. One of the most important differences between structures and classes is that structures are always copied when they're passed around in your code, but classes are passed by reference. Experiment. Write a function that returns an array containing a full deck of cards with one card of each combination of rank and suit. Protocols and extensions. Use protocol to declare a protocol. Classes, enumerations, and structs can all adopt protocols. Experiment. Add another requirement to example protocol. What changes do you need to make to simple class and simple structure so that they still conform to the protocol? Notice the use of the mutating keyword in the declaration of simple structure to mark a method that modifies the structure. The declaration of simple class does not need any of its methods marked as mutating because methods on a class can always modify the class. Use extension to add functionality to an existing type, such as new methods and computed properties. You can use an extension to add protocol conformance to a type that is declared elsewhere, or even to a type that you imported from a library or a framework. Experiment. Write an extension for the double type that adds an absolute value property. You can use a protocol name just like any other name type. For example, to create a collection of objects that have different types, but that all conform to a single protocol. When you work with values who whose type is a protocol type, methods outside the protocol definition are not available. Even though the variable protocol value has a runtime type of simple class, the compiler treats it as the given type of example protocol. This means that you cannot accidentally access methods or properties that the class implements in addition to its protocol conformance. Error handling. You represent errors using any type that adopts the error protocol. Use throw to throw an error and throws to mark a function that can throw an error. If you throw an error in a function, the function returns immediately and the code that called the function handles the error. There are several ways to handle errors. One way is to use do catch. Inside the do block, you mark code that can throw an error by writing try in front of it. Inside the catch block, the error is automatically given the name error unless you give it a different name. Experiment. Change the printer name to never has toner so that the send function throws an error. You can provide multiple catch blocks that handle specific errors. You write a pattern after catch just as you do after case in a switch. Experiment. Add code to throw an error inside the do block. What kind of error do you need to throw so that the error is handled by the first catch block? What about the second and third blocks? Another way to handle errors is to use the try question mark 
to convert the result to an optional. If the function throws an error, the specific error is discarded and the result is nil. Otherwise, the result is an optional containing the value that the function returned. Use defer to write a block of code that's executed after all the other code in the function, just before the function returns. The code is executed regardless of whether the function throws an error. You can use defer to write setup and cleanup code next to each other, even though they need to be executed at different times. Write a name inside angle brackets to make a generic function or type. You can make generic forms of functions and methods, as well as classes, enumerations, and structures. Use where right before the body to specify a list of requirements. For example, to require the type to implement a protocol, or to require two types to be the same, or to require a class to have a particular superclass. Experiment. Modify the any common elements function to make a function that returns an array of the elements that any two sequences have in common. Writing t equatable would be the same as writing where t is equatable. 